Brilliant. Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this um, session on antisocial behaviour. So this is taking place during our um, campaign around antisocial. Sorry, if you can just turn yourselves on mute, that'd be great. Um, this is taking place while our antisocial behaviour campaign is running. Um, we It's running till the end of the week on social media and you've got the link there um, on our website, the our watch page to our ASB pages. Um, we have had so far 10,000 people visit the ASB landing page on the on our, our watch website. Um, people have been hanging on that page for over two minutes so they're really really engaging with the information which is Great. Our focus on um, antisocial behaviour has been around re recognising, recording and reporting. So information on each of those areas. Um, we have a guide on those ASB pages um, around what constitutes ASB. Um, we have a link for a diary to help you record it. And we have information about how to report um, at every level. Uh, so I'm really happy to introduce our speaker today, who is Charlotte Hamilton Kay. She's the Specialist Victim Project Manager from ASB, and she is going to take you through her presentation. If you've got any questions, please do put them into the chat, um, or as I said at the end, you can also do um, put your hand up and we'll, we'll come to you to answer your question. So thank you, and I'll hand over to Charlotte now. Thanks, Amy. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope you're all well on this gloomy uh, autumn evening. Um, I must apologise in advance if I do have any sound issues. Um, I've had to, I was just explaining to Amy, I've had to hide away in the spare room as my office internet's dropped out. So um, do bear with me. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. <clears throat> so is where my technology comes uh, into test. Here we go. Um, so the, uh, the first important thing really is knowing the definition of antisocial behaviour. Um, the Crime and Disorder Act of 1998 defines ASB as follows, acting in a manner that has caused or was likely to cause harassment, alarm or distress to one or more persons not of the same household as the perpetrator. Now, it's really difficult to define antisocial behaviour in one sentence. When looking at the different tools and powers, we often see different language being introduced. We try and use a harm-centred approach when we are looking at ASB, which means that we will try and look at the impact of the behaviour rather than the specific type. Because what one person may feel is antisocial behaviour, another may not. It's quite subjective. That doesn't mean that the impact is any less. So some other different definitions of antisocial behaviour we consider when somebody does something that most people would say is unreasonable or something that causes a nuisance or annoyance. Remember, you can experience antisocial behaviour in many different places. So in your own home, perhaps because of the behaviour of your neighbours, on your street or in your local area, in public communal areas such as parks or on public transport. It's easier to explain what antisocial behaviour is by looking at the most common types. So, firstly, and I'm sure one we've all experienced, noise, noisy neighbours, other noise. It's by far the most common form of antisocial behaviour, involves disputes with neighbours over noise. Within the other noise category, we have construction noise, music from pubs, barking dogs. Um, second type, drunken disorderly or other crime and disorder. Another common complaint we see involves issues of people on the streets causing disorder, so it's often alcohol related. Within this category, we might see gathering of gangs, um, drug activity or vehicle nuisance. So around me, we get a lot of um, dirt bikes going around the footpaths, which is obviously a real nightmare when you, you're walking the dog or, or walking your four year old. OK, harassment, covering a wide range of behaviour that is directed to a person, such as violence, intimidation and hoax calls. Graffiti, vandalism and environmental offences, so litter, fly posting, dog fouling. It may be worth noting that there is a fine line between ASB and crime. In fact, a lot of ASB is criminal or ASB can be a symptom of serious crime. What a resident may consider just to be noise created from people visiting an address 
could relate to anything from drugs, prostitution, modern day slavery or child exploitation. Just because it can't be proven to a criminal standard for the police to be able to take criminal and legal action, it does not mean that the incident didn't happen. We are currently preparing a workshop where we talk about the use of ASB tools and powers in tackling organized crime syndicates. You can't prove the drug dealing, but if you can stop the coming and going of people, it will disrupt the activity and criminals hate nothing more than when a plan is ruined. So who does what? Some antisocial behavior cases are complex and require a multi-agency response. It is only as the agencies work together that a suitable solution can be found. Many community safety partnerships have an ASBRAC, which is A-S-B-R-A-C, an Antisocial Behaviour Risk Assessment Conference. Charlotte, perhaps... I'm sorry to interrupt you, but should your slides be moving on? We've only got one slide. They should, and thank you so much for jumping in, whoever that is. Um, I appreciate that. That's because I'm in the zone there, you see, and I'm not paying attention. <laughs> thank you so much. Right, so let's get, can let me catch up with myself. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, an ASBRAC, Antisocial Behaviour Risk Assessment Conference, or perhaps a Community MARAC, which is a multi agency risk assessment conference, which identifies and supports victims of antisocial behaviour that are most vulnerable to harm. A variety of agencies, as we've got listed on screen, will form these groups, including in some cases, victim support or alternatively provider of support for victims to present to present the victim's perspective. We believe that community safety partnerships which have an ASBRAC or MARAC type of meeting are stronger as a result because they are seeking to put a victim's needs and vulnerability first. We will always advise a victim to report antisocial behaviour to the police, especially if there is especially if there is a personal element such as harassment or verbal abuse. You should also always report to the local authority. It's also recommended to report to any relevant housing provider, whether that be the victim's housing provider or the perpetrator's housing provider, and if they are different than both. If the complaint is about noise, waste, litter, pests, light nuisance, anything that can be classed as environmental, then environmental health team will need to be involved. They have clear guidance for what constitutes statutory nuisance and will support the victim in recording incidents and collating evidence. They may also provide technology to support this, such as noise recording equipment and diary sheets. Once this has been thoroughly reviewed and investigated, they can then decide what steps to take and they do have many tools and powers available. Housing providers also have policies and procedures within their tenancy management plans to enable them to address any issue caused by their tenants. Most tenancy agreements will include a good neighbour agreement and some form of code of conduct. If breaches of these are evidenced, then tenancy warnings can be issued. Tenancies can be altered or restricted and in extreme cases terminated, although this will need to go through the county court. So, the environmental health teams, graffiti, vandalism to vehicles or property, fly tipping, fly dumping, fly grazing, fly posting, unpleasant smells, trespassing, litter, storing rubbish, dog fouling, discarded syringes, abandoned vehicles, the list is endless. I have a neighbour who has decided to break several cars on his front drive so we all drive past the tyres and engines every day. All of this should be reported to the environmental health team. Housing providers. Neighbourhood disputes are where two neighbours disagree about something and that can often become a source of distress and frustration. It is common for both sides of the dispute to have done things to annoy the other person and as a result it can be difficult for agencies to unpick the situation and work out who is the victim and who is the perpetrator. Often both are victims and both are perpetrators. Police. Any criminal activity as part of the antisocial behaviour, so criminal damage, public order offences, threats, drug use or drug dealing, harassment or hate crime, all of these should be reported to the police. 
It would be impossible to list every possible presentation of antisocial behaviour, but hopefully this will give you a general guide to the best agencies to support your client. As we mentioned before, when an area has a robust partnership working policy and information sharing, often all agencies can contribute to the solution. I can see Carolyn's got a hand raised. Yeah, sorry, Charlotte. I just wanted to ask, are we just listening or are we supposed to be getting slides? There is a slideshow. Can you not see the slideshow, Carolyn? But we stuck on the first one and then we moved to one and all we've got is, and then up here now we've got the community trigger. Yeah, is that that's right? right. Yeah, we, the community, the, the, the slides are just, are just showing some bullet points. Oh, right. And okay. it's more a case of just listening to me prattle on, I'm afraid. Oh, no, that's... <laughs> but any questions? I just That's fine. Do note down any questions from anything I say and we can cover it off at the end. Okay, thank you. All right, no worries at all. Okay, so the community trigger, also referred to as the ASB case review. It is the best tool for a victim who feels that they have no voice, that they haven't been listened to, and who feels the case needs more consideration. The community trigger is a statutory right to request a review of the case if the ASB is continuing and you meet the threshold to apply. The trigger is not a complaints process or an accountability exercise. It is not a way of blaming or shaming agencies, which is a common misconception, often by the agencies themselves, which is why they can sometimes be quite um, re resilient to, to activating it. It is purely a proactive approach to bring together all the relevant agencies around a table to discuss the issues and problem solve going forwards. The community trigger in most areas of England and Wales is managed by the council, but in some areas it may be the police. You should be able to find some information about it on your local authority websites. If you can't, try searching for the ASB case review. As I said, it is known by two different names. There are a few things a victim needs to know before making an application. And the first being, what is antisocial behaviour? When it comes to the community trigger, it refers to behaviour that can constitutes harassment, alarm and distress. This does not necessarily mean each incident, but collectively as a whole. So once again, we are considering those terms nuisance, annoyance and cumulative impact. If the antisocial behaviour is still ongoing, but the case has been closed by the local authority, a victim can still apply to activate the community trigger. If a victim does not feel confident about filling in forms, many councils will offer an alternative service <coughs> and they may be able to submit an application over the phone, so it is worth having that conversation. Also, anyone can submit an application on your behalf. <laughs> So this could be a friend, a support worker, a housing or police officer. It literally can be anyone as long as they have the victim's consent to do it. If they have any questions, look and see if there's a phone number you can contact someone or on or to ask or by all means contact us at ASB Help. If we can clarify or assist in any way, then we will. Our email address is on the contacts tab of our website and the final slide of this um, slideshow will have our email address as well. So the threshold, the threshold to apply for the community trigger is set locally. So again, it's worth referring to the local authority's website. But as a legal minimum, the requirement is a victim will need to have made three reports of antisocial behaviour in the six month period up to the application. These incidents need to have been reported to the police, council or housing provider. When assessing the application, other things will be considered in addition to this, like persistence of the behaviour, harm or potential harm, and the adequacy of the agency response. Behaviour which falls below the threshold for harassment, alarm or distress may not meet the threshold test, but when assessing on the grounds of potential harm to the victim, the impact of the behaviour may be such that the threshold is considered to be met. 
So again, this is where we're considering a harm-centered approach. We're looking at impact rather than specific activity. Each of the incidents reported must have been reported to one of the organizations within a month of it occurring. So if you're reporting an incident today that occurred two or three months ago, these do not meet the criteria. This is because, as I said earlier, the key definition of antisocial behaviour is, is that it causes harassment, alarm and distress. And it is fair to assume that if you have not needed to report an issue within a month of it happening, it didn't cause you any of those. However, if you reported them at the time or within the following month, then that's absolutely fine. If you don't have a form to fill in to complete the community trigger, some authorities will just ask you to send an email in. You may just get an email address to submit your case to. So then you must make sure to detail the following. The three incidents, and in, with antisocial behaviour, quite often there is many more than three, but just pick three. Three incidents and the details of when you reported them, which agency you reported them to, alongside any reference numbers that you may have been given. I would advise always picking the three incidents which have caused you the most distress and then explain that the ASB has been occurring for X number of months or years and there were more incidents that you could have written about, but as you only need to reference three to meet the threshold, that's what you've done. The rest of your complaints can then be discussed in more detail later once a community trigger is accepted. If it's an email as opposed to a form to complete, you may also want to include a brief paragraph about the impact that the ASP has had on you and your family's health and well-being, both physical and psychological. Again, I would advise you to keep this clear and concise. So describe any medical problems you have been caused, financial consequences, any trauma. Take the opportunity to express how your life has been affected rather than venting about any of your frustrations with how the case has gone so far. Once submitted, your council should contact you within a specified time frame to advise if you have met the threshold or not. So, evidence and safety. It can be very difficult for victims of antisocial behaviour when reporting issues, as often authorities will request evidence to support these reports. However, in collecting that evidence, sometimes victims' actions could be seen as inflammatory or antagonistic. Certainly, when it comes to a neighbour dispute, you may often hear them referred to as tit for tat. This is not always the case, but it is important to make sure victims know the best ways to deal with their situation. As I've mentioned before, agencies can supply resources to collate evidence, such as noise monitoring equipment, diary sheets and even temporary CCTV. Of course, in this age of smartphones and technology, it is easier than ever to use camera functions and apps to record incidents like noise and verbal abuse. It would be important to check with your environmental health teams, though, as to what noise apps they will accept, as often the equipment they use to record noise is specially calibrated so that they can judge whether it meets the statutory, uh, statutory nuisance parameters. It is very important that members of the public do not do anything that may put them in harm's way or indeed exacerbate a situation. Therefore, we would always offer the following advice. You can only record or photograph evidence in a public place. You cannot record or photograph on private property unless it is your own. Do not take any action which may antagonise a situation and or put you at risk. If you or someone else is in immediate danger or being threatened, do everything you can to get yourself safe and immediately call 999. If an incident is happening outside, never go outside or become involved. Where possible, use all resources available to you from relevant authorities to docu document the antisocial behaviour. Keep a diary of each incident and make sure you report everything in a timely manner. For your own mental well-being, do not wait for something to happen. For example, don't watch your CCTV endlessly to see if something happened while you were out. Use it only to review when you know there's been an incident. Button. Don't sit in the house with no TV on or radio on waiting to hear if you hear something from next door. If, you're, if for example, you're watching TV as normal, 
and you still hear something over that, then that would be a nuisance because it is disrupting your normal activities. Antisocial behaviour can have a devastating impact on the lives of those who experience it. Often victims don't know where to turn or what to do. They may feel like there's no escape from the fear and anxiety. If the ASB is occurring around their home, they may feel that they have nowhere safe to go. In 2007, Fiona Pilkington took her own life and that of her 18-year-old daughter, Francesca. Fiona had made 33 reports of antisocial behaviour and harassment to the local police and authorities. It was found in the inquest into her death that she had been failed by those authorities in the response to her reports. David Askew had suffered 30 years of torment. A vulnerable gentleman with learning difficulties has, who was harassed and bullied within his local community. He was involved in an altercation with a gang of youths outside his property and 10 minutes later collapsed and died. He had reported 38 separate offences in the three years before he died. Gary Newlove had been making reports of ASB in the local area for some years. Underage drinking and gangs were a constant theme. On the night of his death, he went outside to confront two youths he believed had vandalised his wife's car. They had been drinking and an argument ensued. Gary was attacked and beaten to death. He died on his own doorstep. His wife, Helen, went on to become the victim's commissioner and her report, Living a Nightmare, really sheds light on the prevalence and the impact of antisocial behaviour. In the wake of these tragedies, there has been more focus given to the impact of antisocial behaviour and there is more support available. Obviously, we believe there is so much more to be done and we continue to campaign to raise awareness and shine the light on this topic. There is some general advice we can offer victims of antisocial behaviour. Try not to focus on the problem. Distract yourself. If there is a noise issue at home and you know when it usually happens, maybe go out for a walk or plan to be out of the house for your errands at that time. It's important to clarify here that I'm not advocating an individual be driven out of their home or have to change their lifestyle because of the antisocial behaviour of others. We are simply advising methods to minimise the impact of the issue while it is being investigated and addressed. It can be all too easy to become obsessed with collecting evidence and waiting for the next incident, which can have a huge impact on an individual's mental health. Try to access support from your healthcare provider if you feel down or anxious. Your GP can often give you advice on coping with stress and even signpost you to relevant agencies for additional help. You don't have to suffer in silence and there is no shame or weakness in asking for help. Counselling and cognitive behavioural therapy can help in managing trauma, anxiety and processing emotions. Activities like meditation, yoga, mild exercise can lower blood pressure and anxiety levels and release endorphins. There are many books and self-help apps that you could consider. Gentle meditation and calming exercises. You can even chat to your Alexa if you have one friend of mine suggested this morning saying, Alexa, tell me a joke. Seriously, if you find yourself in a moment of intense stress or anxiety, just take a moment to prioritise yourself. So let's talk about what we can do within the community to deal with antisocial behaviour. Groups such as Neighbourhood Watch are key, as you can be the eyes and ears of the community. Being aware of what's happening in your area and reporting anything untoward could be the last piece of a puzzle the authorities need to address a case of antisocial behaviour. But perhaps more importantly than that, the support you can give each other within your communities could save someone's life. In the article I wrote for your newsletter, I described a case which impacted my local community a couple of years ago. Prolific ASB centred around a housing complex and was spilling out into the local community. Residents nearby were terrified and unsure where to turn. Eventually, this case was resolved when the police and local council exercised the tools and powers of the ASB legislation and obtained a closure order on the site. But for me, and perhaps the most satisfying outcome, was when I attended a community meeting afterwards and met with over 200 members of the local community who had come together to discuss their experiences. People who had perhaps not previously had much to do with one another were chatting and sharing and forming new relationships. Now, two years on, they still look out for one another. 
there is an awareness of community safety and a desire to protect what has been built in the aftermath of the 2019 nightmare. Building these bonds within your community is invaluable. And while I'm not suggesting you all live in each other's pockets, making a provision for community safety is a fantastic step. Perhaps an open community meeting once a month where concerns can be aired. You can invite the parish council or the local police to attend. Be aware of the vulnerable people within your community. And the pandemic highlighted to us that often these individuals can slip through the cracks. Maybe a village walkabout or flyer drop, just letting people know what support is available and giving them someone to talk to if they want to reach out. Maybe they can't get out of the house and so have become isolated. You reaching out could be just what they need to help them deal with their issues. Never underestimate the impact ASB can have on someone's life. What may seem insignificant or trivial to one person could be life-changing to another. Make contact with your local council and community safety team and the local safer neighborhood team with the police. In strengthening those relationships, it will open lines of communication and enable you to work together to address the issues within your community. The Neighbourhood Watch campaign on ASB is absolutely fantastic. Recognise, report, sorry, recognise, record and report. This is absolutely key and really captures the basics of what we all need to do. I'm sure you've all had a good look around the Neighbourhood Watch website, but case studies and examples on there are so informative and they can really help you look at ASB differently. It isn't just loud parties or gangs of kids. There's a downloadable pack as well regarding this campaign, which will give you the information and details that you will likely find useful in tackling ASB. It could be a really good idea to print some of these off, maybe keep them in your local meeting room or village hall, wherever you may have your community meetings. It, it will be something for the uh, members of the community to access. Or as I mentioned earlier, if you decided to do some door knocks or walks around locally, they would be ideal to hand out to those within your communities who don't get out as much and maybe don't access the internet. Cannot put enough emphasis on the importance of support when it comes to ASB. I personally believe that being a victim of antisocial behaviour can have more of a detrimental impact on the victim's well-being than some other crimes. And who knows, the support that you provide may even save a life. So thanks everybody, that's, that's my little uh, speech over. Um, I've got the details there up on the screen, as you can see with our email address at ASB Help. Um, I'm gonna go back to the first slide. So you've also got the details um, for the Neighbourhood Watch campaign and you can access the link there. Um, and then we can start going through any questions if you'd like. Um, so just bear with me while I get us back to that first page. Brilliant. Thanks, Charlotte. That's really helpful. Um, you can actually, we've put the ASB link in the chat so you can actually stop sharing. Um, oh, might, wonderful. <laughs> it might be easier <laughs> to be able to, to speak to people. Okay. Um, right. So I've got a couple of questions here that have come to the chat. So I'll um, ask you a couple and then we can um, go to the floor. If you'd like to ask a question, if you can um, put your hand up, then we'll, we'll come round to you. So um, one of the questions that came up a few times is around um, if restricting access um, to premises or on pavements and things like that by cars or obstruction for wheelchair users and prams is ASP. Okay, so yes, I would say it is antisocial behaviour. Um, it's, it, it's about that cumulative impact. So if there is a car um, that, that's parked on the pavement, you can't get past with a pushchair or a wheelchair, and it, it's a one-off, then, you know, it's bad judgment by somebody, but it's happened, you know, it's inconvenienced as we move on. However, if you systematically meet the same issue in the same place day in, day out, then that is a cumulative problem. And that is definitely something that can be addressed as antisocial behavior. So it's worth documenting A, the vehicles that are involved, B, the times of day, report that to your local council and local authority. Um, and once the, the evidence can start to be collected, then some action can be taken against those perpetrators. Perfect, thank you. Um, another question was around um, human, feces um, and if that's ASB I presume that would be reported to environmental health you're saying yeah human feces that's that's 
uh, to be fair, it's not as uncommon as you would like to think. Um, that is a really unpleasant sorry, one. Can we, sorry, can we just keep ourselves on mute while um, until we come round to you? That would be great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Back otherwise. <laughs> Um, yeah, definitely environmental health. Any waste or, um, you know, feces, dog feces, used condoms, syringes, anything like that, that is a, a real health risk that needs to be reported to environmental health for two reasons. One, it needs to be investigated so that any um, common sources can be identified and then the enforcement action can be, um, can be used against them. But secondly, because things like that need to be professionally cleaned up, it's not something that any of us want to be going out into the community and um, have to deal with. Um, obviously, environmental health practitioners will have the appropriate PPE to come and clean up these incidents. So that, that is definitely one that I would advise you to report to the um, environmental health team. Brilliant. I can see That's there's a lot of hands up. Do you want yes. to just go through the questions and then we'll go to the hands up? Is that OK? Um, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to go. Yeah. I'm just going to do a few of these. We'll come to hands. We'll do a few more. I'm just responding quickly to someone who mentioned um, that you said, Charlotte, you did something for our newsletter and they hadn't seen it. So it's in the newsletter that went out at the beginning of November. Um, if you haven't I'll put received... the link in, Amy. Perfect. Brilliant. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, <laughs> Uh, security cameras causing a nuisance are the are security cameras um, and also in terms of public land versus private land there were questions around that I presume there's somewhere you can go to find out a bit more information about yeah. that. yeah so security cameras it's a really tricky one because quite often they can become the source of antisocial behavior rather than helping us gather evidence against it um it you will often get the sort of neighbor disputes um uh where people have got the cameras pointing into each other's gardens or pointing out onto the street. So this is why this is where I referenced in, in what I was talking about that you if you have CCTV on your own property, it can only cover your own property. So it can go up to the perimeters of your hedge, your fence, the end of your driveway and no further than that. Um, if it goes further than that, you then have a responsibility under the GDPR um, legislation that anybody who walks past and is captured on your CCTV you come and knock on your front door and demand to view it and demand a copy of it because it's featuring them. So there's some really strong GDPR guidelines around it, which is why you must only ever um, have it covering your own property. If you want any um, further uh, information um, on the information that the GDPR and what you can and can't record, go to the ICO website. Um, I'll see if I can find a link and forward it out to you, which is basically the, you know, the information um, commander's office. So that, that, that will give you a lot more info. Um, I understand, I've just seen someone comment and say it's tricky with the new ring doorbells. Absolutely it is, um, that are supposed to be motion activated. Um, you should be able to sit a parameter, uh, sorry, set a parameter on a ring doorbell that it, that it only, triggers within a certain distance and you can set that to, to your own driveway and your own property. And just to clarify, ICO is, because I just saw this pop up, ICO is the Information Commissioner's Office and they Thank deal you. with everything <laughs> around um, data protection and personal uh, marketing and things like mass marketing. And GDPR stands for General Data Protection Regulation, which is the latest um, data protection um, act that has gone across that came in with the EU but now um, UK has regulated it internally themselves. Um, just a couple more and then we'll come hopefully, um, well, not hopefully, we will come round quickly. Um, someone asked, someone said that they would used the community trigger and no kind of forward coming solutions were helping them move forward. How do you get accountability from these agencies? Is there a system of accountability? Okay so you, the, you've used the community trigger and there's been no um, there's been no respite from the ASB or there's been no resolution to the ASB or have you not had any response from the local authority? From the sounds of it, unless that person wants to say, from the sounds of it, um, they had responses, but they weren't kind of um, weren't solutions that moved it they... forward. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So there's a couple of options. One being that we could, ASB help as a charity can take a look at your case and if we feel that there is additional um, 
additional actions that could be taken, we can support you in putting in another community trigger application where we will work with you as an advocate and go through that with the local authority. We could uh, contact the local authority on your behalf if we have your consent documented just to see if there is any way we can support them in their response to um, any further action. Um, there is also a review at the moment of the um, Police and Crime Commissioner's role within antisocial behaviour, which is looking to be completed within the next couple of months. Now, once that review is completed, we are hoping that Police and Crime Commissioners will have more of a role in the community trigger process. So they will actually be able to look at appeals and an appeals process. So much as that is a little bit of a future, um, a future endeavour, we are hoping that that will they'll bring a little bit more clarity. But by all means, if you've if you've used the community trigger and you feel that the ASB is still happening and you're not getting anywhere, get in touch with us and we'll see what we can do to help. Brilliant. Thanks, Charlotte. And just um, to say that Charlotte. Um, the slides and um, every and the record, as Cheryl said, the recording will be available on the website. Um, Charlotte will um, send the slides and um, might give us might be able to give us some extra notes as well. I um, can send you my transcript. That's fine, not a problem. Yeah, so that's great. So we've got Charlotte's transcript as well, which we'll send you around. Um, so now we'll go to the hands up, and I'll, I'll go in order when they came up. So Shaheen, do you want to ask your question? Shaheen, can I unmute you? Shaheen, are you there? Uh, hiya, yes, I'm here, yeah. Hi, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, it, I just wanted to just to ask, uh, like, as a concern, eh, but, you know, on our road, Holt Road, it is like most, you know, every week is a rubbish problem. Like, you know, as soon council comes and cleans on Wednesday night, from Friday, you start, like, building up all the rubbish. So is there any way like uh, uh, of asking the neighborhood to help to put like sign board and stuff to stop ongoing problem? So the council are cleaning it up every week, Shaheen, but then it's yes. building up again and then they yes. have to come back the next week and clean it up. And when you say rubbish, do you mean sort of like fly tipping and litter and mess on the street rather than household rubbish? It's a household rubbish, mattress, and uh, item like all household item and stuff like even like today like start building up as well half of road is covered up right okay yeah. so this is definitely one i'd say that you would you would need to talk to environmental health about yeah, um, I, have, I have i have uploaded pictures and i have I okay. have informed the councils, yeah. Okay, and so they are coming to clean it up on a weekly basis, but it's just a bit of a cycle of having to do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Have you yeah. have you used the community trigger, Shaheen? Uh, well, actually, not really. I do ask my neighbours and stuff, but it is not much help. You know, you know, it's like it says, uh, uh, we were asking council for the last two years, you know, if they can put the signboards up, mm -hmm. that would help this whole throat, like... Uh, it's okay. really like, yeah yeah it's like uh, otherwise it's really nice and clean but it's just you know the on the other side where the written garden gate is you always it builds up on that side right yeah. uh, if uh, if if you have been working with environmental health shaheen and and, and you the problem is still ongoing i'm going yeah. the best thing for you to do would be to go on their website and look for the community trigger process because okay. that will call um that will call for a case review and it may be that some other agencies are able to contribute um suggestions into how that that litter may be managed whether it be that the community safety team can look at changing bin days or um you know th there's clearly something going wrong if that waste is building up on a weekly basis so a multi-agency review might be able to problem solve it a little bit so that that would be the, my best recommendation at that point Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for the answer. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Shaheen. Thank you. Um, can we just go to uh, Jay? Jay Lieberman, I know you've had a question for a while. Right, thank you. A couple of things about CCTV. From what I understand, as long as you're notifying people that are walking past your property, uh, you can record uh, wherever you want, as long as you notify them. Now, in my case, I've got window stickers up. Uh, now, granted, my CCTV is strictly for my property right now and my property alone. I'm using the stickers more as a, as a deterrent against crime. 
but like I said, it was my understanding that as long as you notify the pedestrians, and we use that term, uh, that are walking past my house, that you're being recorded, I am covered. However, I do understand GDPR. I'm absolutely right. If they want to come up and look at anything that has their picture on it, that's absolutely fine. Uh, right. I live in Berry Council, just outside Greater Manchester, just to the north of it. And within a couple of weeks ago, they seized sound equipment from uh, an offender, a prolific offender. So it can be done. But like uh, to, to echo what Charlotte said, you have to uh, record the instances uh, and, uh, you know, especially three o'clock in the morning and the banging drums, but it can be done. Also, I just had a meeting with the local councillors for my ward, electoral ward, and they are starting a community safety partnership. And one of the things that was brought up was antisocial behavior. So is it all talk and no action? We'll, we'll see. Uh, from the previous um, time and raising issues with the council, yes, it's all talk and no action. Uh, if you raise an issue with the police, we used to be able to raise issues with the police directly face to face. Issues were taken and the police actually responded to some ASBs, uh, but that face to face interaction unfortunately is no longer there. But like I said, sound equipment has been seized, so it can be done. Um, and uh, like I said, it's my understanding about the stickers with the CCTV system off of your property. Thank you. Okay, Jay, thank you. No, you're absolutely right. And I think um, I've miscommunicated there. If, if you have got notif signage up for the public spaces saying that you are filming and people are notified, then that is absolutely fine. When I say that you can't film um, publicly, what I mean is you can't go onto someone else's private property. So if your neighbour was standing in their garden screaming verbal abuse at you, you can't lean over your fence and shove a camera in the face. You can't film them in their own garden. However, you can stand on the side of your fence with your phone in your hand pointing at the ground recording because it will capture the noise of that verbal abuse being hurled at you. There is no expectation of privacy if someone is shouting at you over the garden fence because they know you're going to hear you but they can expect not to be filmed. So hopefully that's a little bit more clarity. You can capture more noise than you can visually. Thanks, Charlotte. Um, let's go to Dawn Margots next. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Hi, Dawn. Hi. Yeah, I just really wanted to kind of raise awareness of neighbourhood uh, mediation. Um, we haven't, it's not been mentioned at all. And sometimes these things can be resolved by a neighbourhood mediation meeting. The, the, the two, you know, the two, three people involved actually. Absolutely. Uh, so that, that was my main point and would encourage people rather than think in terms of perpetrator and victim to think, thinking in terms of mediation. Um, I don't think there's enough perhaps neighbourhood mediations around, but that's and the second thing you, you kept mentioning the word harassment and harassment actually has a legal definition and and so maybe in a slightly different category but I think it's important to acknowledge that harassment does have that legal definition it does absolutely the problem with with harassment in, in in this terminology it's being used as a description of how it's making you feel so it's making you feel harassed Harassment, as you, you, you quite rightly say, is a legal definition, is it, as a criminal act that the police can take mm. action on. The problem that we often find, and I'm sure many of you will have come across, is the police seem to struggle sometimes to find that, to hit that burden of proof that they need to take oh. the criminal activity, uh, sorry, to take the criminal proceedings. Um, mm. And the burden of proof needed for criminal proceedings is a lot more than is needed to use the civil powers yeah. that we have for antisocial behaviour. So often, um, by treating it as antisocial behaviour rather than crime, we're able to take more action. But by using the word harassment, it Im implies it has hit mm. that legal definition, potentially. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, I couldn't agree more. Uh, it's definitely a bit of a grey area. Yeah, OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. Um, Roxana, got next?
Oh, I think she's dropped out, Amy, and back in the waiting room. She's back in. Oh, Roxana. Hello. Uh, sorry, I couldn't okay. hear you at some point, so I had to leave. Uh, my main issue, so for past two years, uh, so two years ago, I bought a property. Um, above, it's a mezzanine above me. There is a couple. They're council tenants. Uh, but I found out that they have uh, been causing ASB for over two years, including myself. We have had racially aggravated harassment, attempted arson, smoking drugs, selling drugs, uh, stealing and selling stolen bikes in front of my door. We had um, loads of uh, issues. Everything was reported with myself and all other neighbours, unfortunately. Um, and they keep um, putting the blame on different agencies, which obviously is not true. I've been informed not to even record anything, not even the noise that I can hear in my property. I had numerous scandals. Uh, the last time I had to call the police was in September as well. And uh, council keeps saying they're surprised about everything, even though yesterday I received a phone call from the police saying that they know they're the one causing all the ASB, but nothing can be done. So what we, the neighbourhood, can do if council is so dismissive with all the proofs, video uh, recording, um, everything dated, recorded and send it to them. Thank you. Okay, sorry, Roxanne. You did um, you did drop out a couple of times there, but I think oh, I got, got no. It's okay. I think I got what you were saying. So obviously, there's been a lot of problems um, which have been reported, but there's been very little action by the sounds of it. Have you? Yeah, have you uh, used... I've just been dismissed last week again on an by, email by the council. Yeah, but basically, the officer in charge she uh, re replies back whenever. Um, a manager or the MPs are involved. Okay, okay. In the emails. Have you used the community trigger, Roxana? No, because I don't have the, um, on uh, Birmingham's council website, it says I must have another five individual individuals um, reporting similar incidents. But all I know, it's one that made complaints. Uh, in, so so I don't... The, the Birmingham City website says that you must have five other witnesses to these incidents in order to activate the community trigger. Yes, have right. five individuals right. in the local community reported similar incidents of antisocial behaviour separately. Okay, so that, that, that is, that is not correct. I'm reading it for yeah, that is that is not correct. The legislation, um, which is which is part of the ASB, um, you know, the Crime and Policing Act, the, the official legislation, the, the only requirement on there is that there's the three incidents um, reported. So what I think we should do, Roxana, if, if I may, if you can get in touch with us via our admin email address, um, which was on on my slides. Um, and let's talk about this case a bit further because we can we can look at getting in touch with them for you and perhaps getting a community trigger started. Will do. Thank you. No worries. Brilliant. Thanks, Roxana. Um, and thank that's you. great. If Thank you. Um, as we've only got 10 minutes, I'm just going to suggest that if anyone's got individual um, or personal kind of cases, it's amazing to be able to hear or oh, amazing. It's, it's really important to be able to hear. Um, them because obviously as someone else mentioned it is case studies and it's um you know it's all it's really um heartbreaking and we want to be able to help you but because we've only got 10 minutes um if you can contact um ASB help directly then Charlotte and her team can support you in that way um but if we can kind of keep it to kind of general questions around ASB, ASB for the last 10 minutes that would be great um, so apologies for that, but I think that's the way we're going to get through the most questions. Um, so Anthony Lee, you're next up. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, really, it is a personal thing. We, we, we do have some ASB going on and I've reported it on several different occasions to my housing provider. And um, I spoke to the police. I mean, basically, is sort of quite open 
drug use and dealing on the stairs outside where I live, you know. And I called the police and the, poli the police took the police three, three, three attempts to call the police before they got back to me. And they asked me to take pictures of them if I was there. And I kind of, you know, quite plainly not going to do that because I don't want to get involved, you know I mean? Mm. You know, um, but, but I, I report this on a regular basis to my housing provider. You know, my these particular individuals um, set fire to a bin the other day and threw it through the burning paper down the bin chute and, and smoked out my neighbours who are now kind of frightened to come out of the house, you know. And um, I, I reported it, but nobody ever gets back to me about it you know and I, I i want to i find it very difficult to find out who's kind of in charge down there at the housing office you know it's um, mm. you know well again anthony this is another one where i would say if you've been making those reports and you are not getting the adequate response let's look at the community trigger yeah because... can i go down there and just say you know i want to i want to activate the community trigger because yeah. i've reported this on several occasions you know I, I don't see any reason why not I don't see any reason why not. They may ask you to do a formal application, but at least if you're down there in person, you can ask them to, sh to direct you on how to do that. Yeah, because obviously, you know, there is, you know, I won't take up much time, but there's obviously yeah, some antisocial behavior. I mean, you know, we're talking like they, they leave a mess. There's defecation, you know, yeah. urination. The police, to some extent, don't want to come round and arrest them because it's going to take up four hours of their shift and they're just going to end up letting them go you know what i mean i mm. mean these are mm. street drug addicts you know um, yeah but yeah it's it's intimidating you know i mean you know the the, the spin-off is every time i have to every time my wife comes home after dark i have to go down and meet her you know yeah trying to come up my neighbors are frightened to come out of the house they're midwives you know and they're thinking of moving away now which is a shame because they're nice people of course. Um, but um you know um that that was that, that was basically my question how can i so the, it's the community trigger is the answer then is it really yeah absolutely if if it's it's the best tool if if you are not getting um the adequate response or you, no that response, still ongoing I, no response from the housing office other than we're aware of the problem something's going to be done about it you know but it just drives me mad you know it's uh, basically yeah you know, nobody gets back to me all right okay thank you very much i found it thanks most anthony important. i will make sure um let me put that admin address in the chat now um because i know there's a lot of people with hands up that we're not going to get to so please everyone with inquiries do just email into our address and, and we are a small team there's only three of us but we will come back to you all as soon as we can yeah Thank, thanks, Charlotte. That's really helpful. Um, yeah, if, if you've got a personal one and you think that getting in touch with Charlotte or an AFB help is the best way, then um, let me let me know as I'm coming around to ask you so that we can get as many okay. questions as possible. Um, so Catherine Wells, we've got up next. Um, yes, good oh, evening. Yes. Um, I'll start my stop my video as well. Um, this is a, just a general question, but it's something that might apply to quite a, a lot of people on this call. And that is that quite often in the case of ASB, um, um, particularly in flats in council estates or housing association estates, um, the ASB is likely to be caused by somebody who, as it were, is deemed to have challenges. They may have mental health issues, they may be uh, you know, um, long-term drug takers and so on. Um, I wanted to hear quickly from, from your speaker um, how that balances out, because I know in general terms uh, on the Highgate Safer Neighbourhood panel that I am, um, so often people um, who, are, who are the victims of this ASB, noise, drugs, whatever it is, find it's very difficult because um, the council will say, Ah, this individual has problems. So it's it's like balancing the individual problems who's causing the ASB against the the the, the victim, if you will, of that ASB, and it can be very difficult to move that person on. What's your comment? Absolutely, um, Catherine. I've I've come across this a lot. Um, quite often, we we are invited to sit as independent panel members, or often chairs of community trigger proceedings. Um, because we can act independently in different areas. And this is something that presents itself quite often. Now, there is, you know, as part of the Equality Act, the, the legislation that, that we're all aware of, when um, investigating claims of antisocial behaviour, um, the agencies involved will need to um, 
complete what we call um, well, people call it different things in different areas but it, you know and that in equality impact assessment so basically you're, you're looking to assess um the needs of the perpetrator so like you say sometimes there may be learning difficulties or mental health or other needs that need to be addressed but also looking at that against the behavior that is being perpetrated and the needs of the victim now what we quite strenuously try to point out is that if an individual has capacity so if they are if they are living on their own um, and they are supporting themselves quite often they may have support from different agencies but if they are self-sufficient and they have capacity to make their own decisions regarding their finances or or their own mental health uh, uh, medical health then they have the capacity to, to make a choice about their behavior so much as they may have those additional needs um they are still making that choice about their behavior therefore they are um they are just as open to the consequences of that behavior as anybody else so while it is important to consider everybody's you know equality and needs when looking at a case it does not remove the um the gravity of of those actions that they are take that, that are being being done so the victim has just the same rights if the perpetrator has additional needs to if it was just someone next door who who you know isn't considered to have additional issues to deal with did that make any sense or did i just um garble a response at you there Catherine? Um, no that's very helpful but i don't know if in the follow-up if you'll print out any answers to any questions because the way you phrased that was was really useful and important um, to have that terminology to go back to councils to go back to housing association people to be able to frame it in that way so that people in that different so that the victims don't feel that that you know that they're being sort of um, ignored because somebody else's need is greater than theirs that Absolutely. balance is what we need the support with thank you no worries uh, i think it will be is the recording being circulated amy uh, yeah, the recording will go straight on to, um, I say straight on, not tonight, but within, <laughs> with, <laughs> within the week onto the webinars page. It's where we keep all the recordings. of OK, all so hopefully that will keep um, the Q&A on there as well for anyone wanting to revisit it. Yes, yeah. that'll be on there tomorrow and the email will be sent round to everybody tomorrow with the um, with, with the um, link to the webinar and also with the um chat and and the slides and everything so they'll receive everything from today okay yeah um, absolutely thank thank you charlotte let's see if we can maybe get one or two in um more we've got miss hall next uh, hello i've done two community triggers within the local authority in county durham but it was with the police force and there's only ever been six, I believe, successful in the full area. And how we've had a problem, myself and my daughter, for the last few, five years, in fairness, with antisocial behaviour from next door neighbour. And to be honest, we don't really know where to go from there. And I know this isn't a personal, like, uh, meeting, but we just need more advice what to do. Okay. What, I, what I'll say then, Miss Hall, and um, we're actually, we are doing some work with um, County Durham at the moment, so this would be really interesting to talk to you about um, in a little bit more detail. Can I ask if you if you drop an email to the address that I popped in the chat and, and perhaps put for my attention, um, mm -hmm. and if you can pop a phone number on there, I, and you know, a convenient time for you when you're available, I'll give you a call and we can talk about it a little more. Yes, that would be lovely, thank you, because I've been in touch with the Police Crime Commissioner and to be honest, absolutely nothing has been done at all. Okay, okay. No, do that for me. So drop drop me an email with um, with your number and I'll give you a call and we'll talk about it a little further. Lovely, thank you. Thank no you. Worries. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to keep to time um, so we're not keeping people over and I know Charlotte needs to go at six. So um, I'm really sorry that we can't get around to all of these questions. What I'd suggest is you can obviously, if you've got a personal issue with ASB and you want to get some help with sorting that out, get in touch with ASB Help. Charlotte will pop her 
uh, admin address in the chat. We'll also send that out with the, um, the slides. Um, you can also, if you've got a general question around ASB, obviously you can contact um, the inquiries at rwatch.org.uk, send it over there, and then we can send it to the right team. Um, Obviously, we ourselves are not ASB Help, the wonderful ASB Help and Resolve, um, but we can um, pass it on to them or answer the question as far as we know if it's if it's a um, simpler one. Um, thank you so much. I'm really sorry. All those with your hands up, as I said, make sure that you either get in touch with Charlotte at ASB Help or send a, um, an email over to us with some questions. Uh, apologies to everyone who struggled to get in. Not quite sure what was happening there. We did our best to try and get you in as quick as possible. And if there's any questions unanswered, again, really sorry in the chat. It's been a very busy one. We had um, about 430 people attend. So thank you so much for um, giving us the last hour. Um, we'll send out the slides. There'll be the transcript available on the on the website. And there'll also be a short survey sent with the slides. So if you could complete that for us to get an idea about how it was and the problems that you might have had to get in and things like that, that would be really, really helpful. So thank you so much, everyone. And thank you so much to Charlotte for giving up her time to um, share that with us. That's really no, interesting. Thank you so much for having me.